morning everyone, I'm Stephanie Holloway. There are some events coming up that we wanted to make sure you knew about. There are two Freedom in Christ classes coming up. There is one for guys only being taught by Eddie Lawler. It starts Monday, January 25th at 6.30 p.m. Call the number on the screen to sign up. There is also a co-ed class coming up, which meets on Fridays starting January 29th at 6.30 p.m. in room 218, which is being taught by Roy Reed, so please join us for that. The Super Bowl can drive that the second grade class does with Calm is here, so make sure to get some canned soup and drop those off in the lobbies, or you can designate an offering for Super Bowl. The deadline is February 7th, and the goal is 2,021 cans. Discover First is coming up on January 31st from 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. in the Fellowship Hall. This is great if you are wanting to know more about FBC, want to get involved, or are considering membership. Sign up to attend on our website at fbcbolivar.org. We also have a new Christian class that begins Wednesday, February 3rd from 6 p.m. to 7.30 p.m. in room 202. This class meets for 13 weeks and is a great class for adults who are new Christians or young Christians and provides training in the Bible for daily life. The Kids New Christian class is also coming up and that starts February 14th from 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. It meets Sunday nights for three weeks. If you or your child is interested in one of the classes, make sure to sign up to attend online at our website, fbcbolliver.org. Also, today is Jeremy and Kim Scowden's last Sunday as Encounter Worship Leaders. We have so loved having them, and we are so grateful for their ministry. Make sure to take time today, if you see them, to thank them for their ministry to our church. Thanks for joining us. Have a great time in worship. Good morning. Welcome to First Baptist. We're so glad you're here today. If you're watching online or listening on the radio, we want to welcome you as well. If this is one of your first times worshiping with us, we want to invite you to visit our website, uh, fbcbolivar.org. If you go there, you'll find many ways to get more connected with our church. Let's begin with the reading from God's Word, Ephesians chapter 1, verses 3 through 10. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. For he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. In love he predestined us to be adopted as his sons through Jesus Christ in accordance with his pleasure and will, to the praise of his glorious grace, which he has freely given us in the one he loves. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, in accordance with the riches of God's grace that he lavished on us with all wisdom and understanding. And he made known to us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure which he purposed in Christ to be put into effect when the times will have reached their fulfillment to bring all things in heaven and on earth together under one head, even Christ. Let's stand together as we sing Jesus Messiah. Is part of the bread, is blood. 
How sweet the sound.
happy Sanctity of Life Sunday. Uh, what a beautiful thing to be able to celebrate and to be able to dedicate children to the Lord on a day like this. In the midst of a pandemic, uh, what a blessing it is to see that, you know, God is at work and he has been blessing people um, through children and uh, it is such a great blessing. I'm going to introduce these families to you and I'm going to try to stand out of the way so you can see them. Uh, but we're going to have slides up as well. So the first slide is uh, Davis Lackey Bonner to my left. Uh, Davis was born May 5th, 2020. He has two older brothers, and his parents are James and Tara Bonner. Next, we have Malachi James Hopkins. Malachi's birthday is July 9th, 2019, and his parents are Stephen and Abigail Hopkins. Next, we have Adelise May Pierre. Adelise was born May 13th, 2020. Her parents are Alan and Kiona Pierre, and there is her sister, Everly, right there. <laughs> yes. Uh, next, we have Carter Jean Schultz. Carter was born November 4th, 2018. His parents are Nicholas and Brianna Stretch. And his sister is Amelia Rose Stretch. Amelia, Amelia was born June 4th, 2020. Her parents are also Nicholas and Brianna Stretch. And right now, I just want to, if you're a family member who has come to celebrate the dedication of these children, would you just stand if you're one of these uh, children's family members? We're so grateful that you're here with us today. Uh, thank you for coming, and uh, what a blessing it is. Thank you all for coming. And now we are, uh, Pastor Mike is going to come and um, do our, our covenant, our litany with our families. Uh, parents, we just want to remind you that uh, Mike will, uh, will give the pledge, and then if you agree with the pledge, you will respond with, we do, okay? We're going to enter into a time of covenant uh, with, with the parents, with your child. And then we're going to have a time of covenant as a church family as well. So parents, do you come today recognizing your child as a gift from God? And will thankful hearts do you dedicate them to the Lord? Do you pledge as parents to bring up your child in the nurture and admonition of the Lord? Believing that it is in the home that the child should come to love the Bible, worship, and discover the Lordship of Christ, do you dedicate yourselves to Christian parenthood? And finally, do you recognize that not one of us is sufficient for the full responsibilities of parenthood without the aid of God's grace in partnership with the church? Church family, as we enter into a time of covenant, will we all stand together? as we covenant with these families and these parents and these children. And we'll ask you to respond after this covenant is read. Do you as members of First Baptist Church realize this is your child also? Are you willing to provide the kind of church which will contribute to their spiritual maturity? Are you willing to pray, to witness, to encourage, to teach these children and their parents? as their parents, on how to continue to grow in the Lord? And will you do all that is in your power to strengthen this covenant through example and to support this family through prayers as they guide and direct their children? And if so, say, we will. You may be seated. And I will as well. It is so good to see your faces. And so um, I'm glad to be here in the flesh. I was here last week in the early service, and that was all I could do. And so I'm very grateful for the strength the Lord has given me today to be in worship with God's people. Um, thank you so much for your prayers on, on behalf of, of Reg and I. Um, we, are, we are much better. I am not fully up to pastor speed, but I am better, and I'm grateful for that. Um, this morning, I'm glad to add my voice to that I will. 
um, teaching the next generation and helping families to teach their children um, to who Jesus is and to follow Jesus, um, that's something I love. You know that I'm sick when I miss, a, when I miss a, a children's dedication time and a parent's dedication time. Um, this morning um, in worship, um, we have said thank you to uh, Jeremy and Kim Scouten. Today is their last official day um, as worship leaders. And so um, they are finishing up in the 11 o'clock service in the theater. But I just want you to know about that. I'm grateful for Kim and for Jeremy and for their ministry uh, among us um, for over 15 years. Um, well, it was it's probably closer to 17 years because Ray was still pastor um, when they were leading worship as well. Isn't that correct, Ray? So I'm um, glad that, that they've been available to us for so, for so long. Please pray for um, the search committee and the personnel committee as they continue to do um, their good work um, as, as well. I'm so glad that I can bring us into a time of prayer. Um, for those of you who are listening um, by radio and watching by live stream, I want to invite you to pray with us as well. Let's pray together. We thank you, Father, for these children and these parents um, dedicated last week in the 930 service, Lord. And today, we just add our voices, Lord, to say thank you for these children and for these families, these precious young lives. Thank you for those, Lord, that you've called in our church to, to teach them um, the precious truths about how loved they are by you and that you love them so much you sent your one and only son because your word teaches us that you so love the world, you gave your one and only son. Thank you, Father, for these truths that we can teach to children. I pray your blessings on Missy and the children's ministry team as they do um, the work of uh, growing children up um, to follow Jesus. Lord, I, I pray this morning for um, our congregation and for those especially who are um, sick among us, those who are grieving Lord, that your comfort would be near to them, your presence might strengthen them and might be of help to them um, today. Um, Lord, I pray for the family of Doyle Sager, um, my mentor, pastor at First Baptist Church, Jeff City, and ask God your closeness to be with their family and Doyle's um, home going on Friday. Thank you so much for his impact and influence in my life. I'm grateful for your servant, Doyle. Lord, thank you, Lord, that in these moments we get to lift our voices and proclaim Jesus as Messiah, to proclaim together, Lord, the amazing grace um, that has been shared with us, Lord. We pray that today, Lord, in our worship, that you would strengthen and grow our faith in these days, Lord, that continue. Lord, strengthen us. Give us an endurance and a stamina that we need. Lord, I want to personally just say how glad I am um, to be with your people today. Thank you, Lord, for um, recovery and for strengthening me. Lord, thank you that you hear all of us pray. Lord, there are burdens on all of our hearts. We continue to pray for our nation, for those who serve in places of authority, and ask God for truth and righteousness to reign um, in those places. Lord, we ask for um, your help today. Help us to pay attention to what you are doing, what your spirit is saying to us. Lord, direct our attention to the importance of spiritual growth in our lives. We love you, Lord. We thank you for loving us first. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Our scripture reading this morning comes from Romans chapter 15, verses four through six. For everything that was written in the past was written to teach us so that through endurance and the encouragement of the scriptures, we might have hope. May the God who gives endurance and encouragement give you a spirit of unity among yourselves as you follow Christ Jesus, so that with one heart and mouth you may glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let's stand together as we sing, Just As I Am.
If you have your Bibles, I'm going to ask you to open them to the book of Haggai. Yes, that is a book in the Bible. It is the 37th book of the 39th, uh, 39 in the Old Testament, um, and it is the 10th of the 12 what we call minor prophets. The easiest way might be to go to Matthew and hang a left and go three books from Matthew. And so that's probably the easiest way you can find it. Hey, look, never be ashamed to, be, um, to go to the table of contents or just to leaf through your Bible to find a book like Haggai that only has two chapters and 38 verses in it. Um, I'm going to try to answer why Haggai in a minute. And so that's coming if you're already wondering, why are we turning to Haggai? What has this guy been doing while he's been sick? I want to start a series of messages today called Then, Now, and Whatever Comes Next. Because as I look at our lives, we, we came from what was our normal, and now we're in whatever this is, right? Um, these pandemic days, and we're not sure what comes next that will be the next normal of some kind in the future. And I call these in-between days, in-between days. They are not yet ready days. They are days where, for us specifically, we're hopeful that this vaccine can bring a way for us to return to some semblance of what once was, but probably it will be different, and I'm not sure what it will be, so that's why I just said whatever comes next. Because we need to be able to navigate a faith. We need to be able to have a faith that will help us to navigate these in-between days because surely we are living in them. God's word provides many examples to us of his people living through hard times. And in 520 BC, we catch up with God's prophet Haggai this is after the exile. This is during what we call the restoration um, in, 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 Jews, in Jerusalem. And we find this challenge and encouragement that comes from God's prophet to his people to repent and to trust him in days of struggle and in days of restoration. And so I want us to take time to listen to Haggai. His prophecy takes place in the 6th century B.C., but I think it has relevance for the 21st century. So as you listen, as you hear God's word speaks, one of the things you'll hear repeated is that this is God's word. And so because it's God's word, it's a word that's alive and active to you. It's not a word that's dead because it's 2,500 years old. It's a, it's a word that's alive to you and available to you today. Don't miss out on what Haggai wants to say to you in your life today. I'm going to be reading from the New International Version um, and just reading in the first 11 verses to, be, to begin with of chapter 1. Um, let's read together, and then we'll ask some important questions like, who's Haggai and why Haggai, and especially why now? So that's where we're going. In the second year of King Darius... We know that that is 520 B.C. You say, how do, can we know that? Because he's a known Persian king. And we know the dates of his reign. And so the second year is the 520 B.C. In the second year of King Darius, on the first day of the sixth month, um, on the Julian calendar at that time, it would be in August of 520 B.C. In Haggai, we're going to find very specific dates that target to his prophecies that he gives so on the second year of King Darius, on the first day of the sixth month, the word of the Lord came through, literally came by the hand of Haggai the prophet to Zerubbabel, son of Shealtiel. And don't worry about these Old Testament names. I just sometimes will run through them by just pronouncing the first letter like this. Through the prophet Haggai to Z, son of S, governor of J, and to, Josh, to Joshua. Does that sound weird? You're thinking, our pastor should know how to pronounce Bible words. If I was Hebrew, maybe I could pronounce them better. I tend to anglicize them, if not Yankeeize them. But also, the word also came not just to Zerubbabel, but also to, jo to Joshua, son of Jehoshadak, the high priest. 
This is what the Lord Almighty says. These people say the time has not yet come for the Lord's house to be built. Then the word of the Lord came through the hand of Haggai, the prophet. It, is it time for you yourselves to be living in your paneled houses while this house remains a ruin? The temple had been destroyed in 586, 587 BC when the Babylonians had, had come in and just ransacked the place. It was the Syrians who did that to the northern kingdoms in the 8th century. And then in the, sixth century, the 7th century, it, it's Jerusalem that, that falls at the hand of Nebuchadnezzar and his group. And then, then come along the Persians, the Medes and the Persians after that. Of course, then it will be the Greeks, Alexander the Great, and then it will be the Romans. So you have these waves of rulers, of empires, and their impact on God's people. So this is how we, we see it. Is it a time for you yourselves to be living in your paneled houses while this house remains a ruin? See, they had come back in 539. They had been let go by King Cyrus and had been sent back, and they started a good work. They renewed the foundation and celebrated it. You can read about that in the book of Ezra in the, New, in the Old Testament. But they stopped the work after that because of political pressure and because of the people around them at the time. So they started focusing on their own things. Verse 5, now this is what the Lord Almighty says. Listen to this. Give careful thought to your ways. You have planted much, but have harvested little. You eat, but never have enough. You drink, but you never have your fill. You put on clothes, but are not warm. You earn wages, but only to put them in a purse with holes in it. That ever happened to you? This is what the Lord Almighty says. Give careful thought to your ways. If for no other reason than to hear these two times repeated to us, that we are encouraged by God's word to give careful thought to our ways. We all need to hear this. Verse eight, go up into the mountains and bring down timber and build the house so that I may take pleasure in it and be honored, says the Lord. You expected much, but see, it turned out to be little. What you brought home, I blew away. Why, declares the Lord Almighty? Because of my house, which remains a ruin, while each of you is busy with his own house. They had neglected the center of their culture and the center of their worship. They had become distracted by all the other things going on around them and had put off for over 15 years rebuilding the temple. Therefore, verse 10, because of you, the heavens have withheld their dew and the earth its crops. I called for a drought on the fields and the mountains, on the grain, the new wine, the oil, and whatever the ground produces on men and cattle and on the labor of your hands. This is the word that God gave to Haggai in 520 BC to God's people. Now, the reason that God sends his prophets to his people is that he wants to be in right relationship with his people. And he sends his prophets, he sends his messenger, his, his, his person on the scene to help them to return to him. Who is Haggai? Haggai? Haggai is a sixth century prophet. He gave four messages in 520 BC from August to December on our calendar is what it would be. So the book named after him is the 37th of 39. It's the 10th of the 12th of minor prophets, two chapters. 38 verses. One of these weeks we'll read the entirety of it. It doesn't take that long as you can imagine. Now, good thinking people, reasoning thinking people, I know you're saying to yourself, why are we thinking about Haggai in 2021? It's no longer 520. What's our pastor thinking about? I want to give you some rationale for why we should think about Haggai. And the first one is enough, but I'm going to give you four reasons. And the first one is this. Why Haggai? We need to hear and read the Bible Jesus did. Jesus in the synagogue would hear on a regular basis through the year all of the books of the Old Testament read aloud. And Jesus would hear this word as God's word. Think of it. They were building a new temple in Jesus' day in Jerusalem. It was, the, it was one of the great wonders of the world at that time. People would come 
from, from all parts of the known world to see the temple in Jerusalem that was still being built even when Jesus was an adult, even when he was crucified and raised from the dead. It was a mighty sight. But when Jesus would hear Haggai's story, he would hear about a people who had neglected the worship and the centrality of the worship of their God. We need to hear Haggai because it was the Bible Jesus heard and read. That's enough. Because it's God's word, it's alive and it's active, sharper than any two-edged sword. When you've heard God's word speak, he is speaking to you. It can speak to you and your situation today. When you hear, consider your ways, you hear God's voice. The second reason why Haggai and for now is that I want to increase our biblical literacy. Not only do I want you to know that Haggai is a book in the Old Testament, I want you to know why it's there. I believe that it is in our canon because 26 times it says, this is the word of God. In 38 verses, 26 times it says this. God's people were convinced that this was God's word for them in a very specific time and moment. Haggai is in the Bible. Discover why. That's what we're going to be doing. Romans 15, 4 tells us, as we heard, for everything that was written in the past was written to what? Teach us. Why? So that through endurance taught in the scriptures, anybody need some endurance today? And the encouragement they provide, anybody need to be infused with some courage? We might have hope. I think it's worthwhile for us to understand what God was saying then and what he's saying now to us through, through Haggai. The third reason I want us to study Haggai is to navigate a growing faith and trust in God in our in-between days. Romans 10, 17 says that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. When we hear God's word, when it comes into our being, when we're confronted with its truth, our faith can grow strong. The fourth reason is I want us to bridge between the centuries and see that the people in Haggai's day were in in-between times, and we are too. They were surviving and coping with the impact of traumatic events. Would you consider it traumatic for someone to come in and take over your country and take away thousands and thousands of families out of your country? That is what happened to them 70 years before this time when they were exiled and now they've come back as refugees and things are in tatters. There was a common struggle in their day to obey God in the hard times. They needed a faith and a courage to rise above the challenges that they were facing, and so do we. And also we're going to see there was a leadership gap going on in Haggai's day. And I think that that can speak to us as well. Can I give you some specifics about why I think it was in between times for them in their, in their day? You understand what, what I mean by in between days in our time. But they were living in in between days because there was political pressures going on around them. The Babylonians had been taken over by the Medes and the Persians, but they were getting ready to be on their way out as well. People had moved from Babylon, from Persia, and had come to settle in Israel. They had intermarried. It would become the issue known as the Samaritans. Later in Jesus' day, we read the story about the Good Samaritan last week in worship together. You see, they, they had political issues going on around them. They, because of the Samaritan issue, there were domestic ethnic divisions and fears happening in their in-between days. That sound familiar? They had economic threats going on as well. Did you hear God's word say that they didn't have enough to eat and there wasn't enough to drink to keep you fill? Did you, hear, did you hear God's word say that there was inflation going on? Their money wasn't going as far as it used to? That even though they worked hard, they didn't get as much for what they had? There were economic issues going on. There were overwhelming damage that was all around their community and spotlighted on the temple. It was devastated. These traumatic events and coping with them and trying to just survive, that's what they were trying to do. These refugees, these exiles who had returned. 
There was understandable fear going on. There were people who were trying to keep them from completing the temple so that Judah wouldn't become a power as it once had been in its former day. There are all kinds of turmoil going on around them. And so they had returned to creature comforts. They made sure their houses were really nice and God's house had been neglected. Now, I'm not preaching this because we're going to build a new sanctuary at First Baptist Bolivar. I'm not trying to manipulate God's word in that way. But I am trying to say that the point then and the point now is they were distracted by other things from the centrality of worship. They had put it off. And they had gotten comfort, comfortable with their own things in these in-between days. Listen, when you're just trying to survive, you try just to take care of what you can take care of and just move on. But they had missed out on something important, so important that God used a guy like Haggai. You know, the scholars, as I studied, they debate whether he was an older man or a younger man. Um, His name in the Hebrew means festive, or even if it's a derivation of Haggai, meaning festival of the Lord, was, is pretty likely. But could you imagine naming a kid festive or joy in the midst of turmoil and devastation? I, I'm not sure about that. I think he might have been born in better days. I think he might have been an older man who's come back now with the exiles. And for 15 years now, as an older man, he's watched this depletion go away, and God's spirit moves in Haggai's heart. And as we read in 2 Peter last fall, God moved and spoke to him and moved his heart to speak to his people. The point then and the point now is this. Don't be distracted from the centrality of worship and obedience to the Lord Almighty in in between days. This is a reality check for us. It's easy to be distracted in in between days. Lesser necessities, even good ones, even good ones, Even good things can deter us and detour us from our own discipleship. You know, in 520, they would have to pass the temple mount all the time and see it. It was in the highest point of the city. And everybody probably said for a few months, you know, we're going to get back to that. We're going to take care of that. And then year after year after year, it went to the wayside until God cares enough about his people to say, This is not how it's supposed to go. You see, they had been taken away in exile because they had been idolatrous and hadn't been engaging with God. You see, it's not so much the temple itself as it is the relationship that happened in the temple. That's where God met with his people in worship. That's where the word was was read. That's where it was sung together. That's where they prayed together. God was calling them back into relationship with himself. That was the reality check. And verse five and verse seven are the inventory. So let's take inventory ourselves. Is there anything distracting you in these in-between days from kingdom focus? That's just a good place to stop for a moment and think. Many things, even worthy things, can keep us from, being, from focusing on the priority. Later, Jesus would say in Matthew chapter 6, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. You remember that Jesus would say in the temple itself, you tear down this temple and I'll build it back in three days. And of course, he was talking about his body and the resurrection Listen, we're not talking about just a building for building's sake. God wanted them to be interacting with him and they had been distracted, surviving and coping. But maybe even more than that and maybe on a deeper level, we need to say, are you consciously, willfully being disobedient and disengaging with God during these in-between days? It had grown to a place where they were disregarding God and being disobedient. 
It wasn't just that they were distracted, but it had grown to disobedience and and disregard for God. Don't continue to disregard God, even in these days. Repent and renew your relationship with him. And that's why God was sending Haggai. God was saying, I want to be engaged in a relationship with you. Even in these hard times, I can help you. So we take inventory. I want to talk just briefly about four things I think we could take away for how to navigate in between days so our faith grows stronger. And, and the first one is to give careful thought to your ways. I've said it multiple times, but I think Haggai was trying to emphasize this. Literally, the Hebrew is set to heart. Think about your ways. Don't deceive yourself. Don't be deluded. Are you focused on kingdom things? Second is listen and let God's word set your course. Five times in the passage that I've read, we've heard it repeated. This is what the Lord says. This is what the Lord says. You see, references to God's word, God's voice as the source of authority and guidance and help. That's what they needed, and that's what God was providing. Brothers and sisters, today is the 24th of January. Are are you engaging in God's word yet in 2021? Or have you been distracted? Or have you been willfully disobedient? Have you been disregarding God and not finding or hearing God's word said to you? Listen, on the 24th of January is a good time to say, you know what, now is the day that I'm gonna be involved and engaged in God's word. You need that. Your family needs you to do that. Your church needs you to do that. We need to give heed to God's word, to listen and let God's word set your course. The third one's an interesting one, I think. But I want you to take notice that as Haggai talks to um, the people, he's specifically talking to the leaders. So I want you to notice that it starts with the leaders. Mom and dad, grandparents, students, Aunts, uncles, in your home, the reading of God's word, the reading of God's word in your life individually as well as in your home is needed. We need your leadership in these ways. We we certainly want to teach children how to do this and the the home partnering with the church and doing that. But parents, grandparents, great-grandparents, that's got to be happening in your house too. Because you know what? Children and grandchildren, great-grandchildren, they need advice. They need wisdom. They need help. And they just don't need good common sense, although that's great. But they also need you to have God's word in your heart so that you can give it to them when they need it as well. Starts with leaders. Deacons in our church, Sunday school teachers and core group leaders, ministry team members, ministry staff members. It starts with us. God's word active in our hearts, in our lives, us hearing his wisdom to know how to navigate these in-between days. It starts with leaders, civic leaders, leaders in our hospital, in our university, in our school district, in, in our places of business. We need you to be wise, sensitive. We need you to be discerning in these in-between days. So we must give careful thought to our ways. We must listen and let God's word set our course. Listen, if you've not started in a a way to read God's word every day, you can get on YouVersion online. There are so many different kinds of plans that you can be. You can dust off that Bible in your house today and say, I am going to pick up reading in the gospel of Matthew. Boom, go. The gospel of Mark, go. All of us need to be in God's word, seeking God's wisdom in these days. Listen. You can serve in your sphere of influence, of leading, but you know what? It will be expounded upon when you are in God's word and getting wisdom exponentially is what I was trying to say. Finally, we need to take corrective steps of action. We need to be obedient and do something. Can I show you how that happened here in chapter one? Picking up with verse 12. Then Z, son of S, Joshua, son of Jehoshaphat, Joshua, son of J, 
the high priest and the whole remnant of the people obeyed the voice of the Lord their God. Listen to that. Haggai gets to be one of the prophets that the people actually respond to God's word. That doesn't happen very often. Notice that. God's word spoke. God's people heard. God's people repented. That's something just to notice. Notice what happens. The whole remnant of the people obeyed the voice of the Lord their God. And the message of the prophet Haggai, because the Lord their God had sent him, and the people feared the Lord. Then Haggai, the Lord's messenger, gave this message of the Lord to the people. I am with you. What good news is that, declares the Lord. So the Lord stirred up the spirit of Z, son of S, governor of Judah, and the spirit of Joshua, son of J, the high priest, and the spirit of the whole remnant of the people. And they came and began the work to work on the house of the Lord Almighty, their God, on the 24th day of the sixth month in the second year of King Darius. What day did we start on? The first day. And they started work on what day? The 24th. You say, well, why did it take them 23 days to get with it? Well, they had to go up to the mountains and get the timber, right? They had to get organized. They had to get that thing started. And that's what happened. But by the 24th, together in their community, having heard God's word, they moved together to do what God said. And they were focused on what God wanted them to be focused on. Brothers and sisters, we are living in in in-between days. And we need a growing faith to navigate these days. I think... God's word in the book of Haggai helps us to begin learning how we can do that. I want to give you a couple moments so that you can do what God's word says. Give careful thought to your ways. Will you pray with me? I give you just a moment just to quietly meditate on God's word. What you've heard his spirit say to you. When God's word comes and it confronts us about something that we're either doing or not doing, that we need to stop doing or start doing, his purpose in doing that is to draw us into relationship with him. He wants us to walk closely with him, wisely with him, humbly with him. Students, the semester is just getting started. Don't miss the opportunity to start with him, to start in his word. You're going to need wisdom for some decisions that are coming up in your life, students, parents, grandparents. Thankfully, God's word tells us in James that when we lack wisdom, we can come to him and he will give to anyone who asks if they ask without doubting. If you've been distracted, confess that. God's word tells us that he is faithful and just. That's who he is. And that when we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If you've been distracted, tell him so. Come clean with him. If you've been disregarding him, tell him so and ask him to forgive you. If you've been willfully disobeying him about something, ask him for his forgiveness. Give careful thought to your ways. We thank you, Father, for your word to Haggai. We thank you that that group of people responded where despite all of the difficulties that they they were experiencing in those in-between days, their faith grew. They were stirred, your word says, Lord, would you stir us and build us up to be able to navigate these in-between days. Lord, please help to get us ready for whatever comes next. And if we'll learn to walk with you in the now, then whatever comes next, you're already there 
and you'll be there when we need you to help us through those times as well. Lord, help us not to be hearers only of your word, but help us to do what the people did uh, in 520 B.C., Help us, Lord, to to act on your word, to be doers of your word. Thank you, Lord, for what you want to teach us through the book of Haggai. Thank you that you want to give us endurance and encouragement and hope. We love you, Lord, and we thank you for loving us first. Lord, receive our praise as our response, Lord, to you today. Lord, help us to hear one another affirming our faith journey that you are with us and we are with one another and we want to focus in on what it means to be disciples who are making disciples. Lord, we're grateful, Lord, for the opportunity for us to participate in your mission. Thank you, Lord, for calling us to the centrality of who you are and what you want to do among us. It's good to be your people, Lord. We love you in Jesus' name, amen. Let's stand. Let's sing together and worship together. Come
for being here this morning. Just to give you an invitation, if you would like to speak with someone, with a pastor, uh, we would love for you to come down to the front at the end of the service or call the office and we can set up a time to meet with you. We would love to do that. Um, also, if you would like prayer, you can email any prayer request to prayer at fbcbolivar.org so that we can be praying over those things with you. There are many ways you can worship through giving, so we want to give you those opportunities as well. One would be at the doors as you leave. There are buckets there. You can also give through the mail, text, bring it to the office, anything that works for you. Um, as we leave, we want to make sure we are not crowding each other, so let's let the people in the back exit first so that we're not clumping together in the aisles. Thank you for that. Let's close with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for today. What a joy it is to be in your house, Lord. And we thank you for the message from your word. Help us to live in the truth of your word. Help us to study it each day and hide it in our hearts, Lord, so we can depend on it anytime we need it. Thank you, Father, for your revelation, for the truth that you've shown us. Thank you for the gift of Jesus. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.